Chapter 3. The Rise and Fall of Dionysus Man is concerned with man, and forgets the whole and the flowing. Ezra Pound How do we lose Dionysus? Psychologically, the story of his loss is the triumph of rationality over irrationality, thinking over feeling, the concrete masculine ideals of power, aggression, and progress over the intangible feminine values of receptivity, growth, and nurturing. As the patriarchal religions gained in power, the old matrifocal ways of Dionysus were diminished and finally lost. As early as the 13th century BC, the worship of Dionysus had spread across Europe and Asia. His cult received the official stamp of approval in the late 6th and early 5th centuries BC, when he replaced Hestia on Olympus. The ancient Greeks celebrated Dionysus' festival in the springtime, when the grapevine was just beginning to leaf. It was a celebration like no other. For five days, all the business came to a halt. No one could be arrested, and some prisoners were even freed. Perhaps the most unusual, his worship was not confined to a temple ritual. Instead, they honored him with a sacred play. It is to this celebration of Dionysus' death and rebirth that we owe classical Greek theater. The joyous celebration of his resurrection gave birth to comedy, and the bemoaning of his death, the singing over the sacrifice of the symbolic goat, the tragedia, or goat song, became tragedy. His glory, however, was not to last. The patriarchal, law-abiding religions of the Romans, Jews, and Christians who succeeded the Greeks did not take kindly to the irrational antics and intoxications of Dionysus. When the Romans got hold of the capricious, goat-like quality of Dionysus, they perverted it quickly and totally. They made the god Dionysus into Bacchus, no longer the god of wine, but the god of drunkenness. Around 186 AD, the Romans began to systematically persecute Dionysus and his followers, the Bacantes, who were perceived as threats to the Roman system. The Bacantes were charged with immoralities and crimes, and, in a madness similar to that which swept the Salem witch trials in colonial America, the government executed thousands of innocent people. The Roman Senate finally banned the Bacchanalia, which had been formerly the Dionysian festivals, and Dionysus has not been seen in polite company since. In his place, the Romans elevated Apollo, the god of light, who had one time been honored equally with Dionysus at Delphi. Apollo gradually came to represent analytical thought and the preservation of law and order. The unpredictable, irrational, and ecstatic Dionysus had no place in this scheme, was, in fact, the enemy of it. The chief god was now officially to be found up there, in the sky, as the sun, Apollo. Down here, the earth, the realm of Dionysus, was shorn of its power. As we, sh- we shall see later, Dionysus fared no better with the Jews or the Christians, who turned his goat image into the very face of the devil. This is the historical version of the rise and fall of Dionysus, but there are other reasons for his loss. Sometimes, psychologically, it is necessary to set one quality aside so that another may be adequately rooted. This is the case with Dionysus. The collective human psyche needed to suppress the irrational before it got completely out of hand, in order to nurture the rational. As greatly as I feel his loss, I also believe that had the Dionysian ethic prevailed, we could have never achieved the discipline we needed to make the progress which our scientific, rational culture has produced. Now, however, the cult of rationality seems to have gone as far as it can go. The loss of spiritual ecstasy in Western society has left a void that we can fill in the only way we know how, with danger and excitement.